Yeah, and there's some stuff that Rob and I have been planning that um, brings governance into <laughs> uh, the game in some ways that are freaking super, super cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I That's wish awesome. I could. No, I wish I could give by all you means feel free to there. leak. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wish I wish I could. Um, we're close. We're, yeah. we're not far from, from. It feels uh, like it. it feels like we're on the verge of something big coming. You know, yeah. just all of it together. And I, and I like to uh, say, I mean, even I, I'd be willing to definitely give people tours out there. So I mean, I just oh, did yeah. a, a recent tour just recently for our internal uh, roundtables uh, yeah. at the Knights Guild. So like, I mean, oh, I, nice. it actually yeah. worked out really well. I actually did some practicing here and there. So I've actually been giving tours out uh, to certain members of the guild recently. So I'll get you a little it, hat and make you a tour guide. Uh, yeah, exactly. I might, I might, I might do it. You never know. Yeah, give me a little hat tour guide and a little, a little map that I just pull out for no, for no reason. Welcome to Around the Corn, presented by the Knights Guild. Thanks for tuning in for part two of our interview. Please like and subscribe because getting the likes and subscriptions is the best part of our day. If you want to hear us speculate wildly on something in-game, throw your questions in the comments, and next episode we'll pretend to know the answer. Follow us and the Knights Guild on X. You can learn a ton about the Knights Guild on Discord and the Guild website. All the links you need are in the description. I'm your host, Fo Hubris. As always, I'm joined by my NFT buddy, Eddie Z. Eddie, how's it going? Oh yeah, man! It's a great first half uh, episode last week. I can't wait to uh, for everybody to go ahead and listen to the next one. The, the interview rest just of gets it. better and better along the way. Yeah, I think. that was yeah, great so. conversations. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, there's more to come. Here we go. You yeah. kind of talked about this a little bit earlier about kind of just building the relationships, and I know in our research for doing this interview that you kind of have like a, a really rich history in the Austin, Texas area, where you built companies like a and drum co and you were working for places like, Oh my green and Zulu food. And I know what I noticed about each one of those locations, each one of those stops for you, there seemed to have been um, a lot of relationships built with like vendors and partners at each, each one of those um, places where you were, you know, we were either working or leading teams or, or, or a, a founder. I wonder how does that experience like work to your advantage in this marketing push to come okay um good question so i mean wisdom is a big part of it knowing what works what doesn't um but also along with wisdom humility having the willingness to know that maybe the plan we have isn't correct and therefore i should run this by our uh, marketing advisor and and let's make sure that we get some uh, peer review on this and uh and some suggestions but the wisdom of knowing that you can't effectively scale any um, endeavor without good systems and processes around it. And so if the goal is we want to add 50 large communities uh, through doing some joint marketing partnerships uh, that create awareness of cornucopias, if that was the goal, if it was 250 communities, whatever it is, you have to think about how to scale in the beginning. And so it does take a little bit longer because if you're going to do it right, it takes a, a bit longer to prepare. So that's why we've, we've been preparing uh, and are continuing to. But the, uh, the main thing is, is having those systems and processes so that you can empower your team. One of the best books I've ever read on business, and I, I, I'm an avid reader, I love to, to keep reading and growing and learning. But uh, E-Myth Revisited, that book uh, really got me thinking about how important it is to, for anything that I do for my company, uh, to build out a process around that. Because at some point, I'm probably going to have to pass it off to somebody else and to build out systems so that it can scale and get done to the quality that you want it to get done. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's been an invaluable lesson and i would say that those are some of the things that i would use towards and it's also just sales and people skills just learning to relate you bring that in to the equation when you're having a conversation with a ceo of a large esports community um, and you can relate to them and talk to them and effectively communicate to where they understand what you're doing and what the value add is then you have a much better chance at um, convincing them to be a part of what you're doing uh, which is, yeah, it's key. 
Well, a, a handful of Kopi cafes ago, you released a flowchart explaining the Kopi utility. And a small part of that chart said that Kopi will be used to purchase in-game ads. As we head towards the alpha release, are you also having conversations with potential adv uh, uh, advertising partners or does that come later? Yes and no. So you can't really build an effective stream of revenue from advertising until you can say, hey, there's going to be uh, 5,000 daily active users that see your sign or, you know, there's going to be 50,000 daily active users that are going to see this part of the racetrack when they're going in or whatever. So mm -hmm. until we have that data, it's not going to be effective at growing revenue from it. What we can do and what we've discussed is pre-selling and getting somebody grandfathered rates. So if they're willing to take a little bit of risk, they're getting a high amount of value because we can't give them that data. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is something that we could do. Uh, but, uh, and we can also, what we currently can do and currently are doing and what, in fact, this morning I messaged one, <laughs> one of the community around this, but uh, it's, uh, giving uh, other projects in the space, in the crypto space, or even Web2 gaming space, a um, some space in our game mm. that, um, you know, awesome. that can that can show, you know, they can show their logo, their branding or something inside of our game. And so, yeah, we are, we can do that now. And we're, we, we are doing that now. So oh, wow. That's uh, exciting. We'll, we'll be doing it more. Well, in fact, you know, you, you could see uh, Crypto Crow, He's yeah. got a yeah, little, yeah. We've, we've, we've done our own little. We've, only, we've done our own little. <laughs> I sang the Crypto Crow theme song in the middle of an episode once when we were standing by a sign. So we were oh, like, we, really? we, yeah, we we found it. We were like, what is this? And I just started <laughs> like, crow your coins, crow your coin. And it was awful, yeah. but you know, it was somewhat hilarious. Yeah, we also yeah. don't you? I mean, you also have what like stuff that yeah, I saw on that that uh, the catwalk. I think you had the Tokyo podcast. I think as well. Yeah, I the thought. Tokyo. Yeah, Neo Tokyo was on there. Neo Tokyo. Yes, yeah. correct. There, there you go. Uh, that's yeah. that's pretty dope. So for, that's a great community. We have good relationship with those guys too. So yeah, that's off to them. Uh, so for the you know the Web three component of Cornucopus is what brought a, like a lot of us to this project before you even had all the amazing graphics and landscapes and maybe like the Web three aspect isn't an effective of a message as you engage like new pools of gamers. Do you feel compelled to like? educate them about web three or do you think it's better to just focus on the gameplay as if there's nothing different about this game that's an that's also a yes and no so yeah. i don't ever want to push something on somebody yeah um so if they choose and if they're curious we want to have the ang the, the option to help onboard them to web web three through a little tutorial how to set up your wallet how to do the seed phrase thing whatever it may be so we'll make it as easy as possible but we also thinking of the mainstream gamer they don't right right now the state of mainstream gaming is so different than what it'll be in five years like i said but um right now there's an antagonism towards crypto and so uh and rightfully so in some ways wrongfully so in some ways that that message among mainstream gamers is there and so that's you know obviously if that's a big part of what i'm going after we want to remove all the web3 elements that we can from them seeing it so that they feel like they can get in and play the game and they haven't had to learn anything now that being said they might be utilizing web3 without even knowing it and that's a powerful powerful thing we're utilizing the internet right now and we know it, but like, we don't know exactly how it works or maybe you guys do, but you know, we don't know exactly how everything, you know, but the, you know, I think, I think that's the goal is to get it as seamless as possible. So it's super easy for web three or non web or, or web two gamers. Both of those need to exist, but yeah, 100%. I have a degree of responsibility. Um, being an early pioneer in crypto and you guys as well we're all early in crypto we're all pioneers to one degree or another i think that we have a responsibility to bring people in uh, because it is an important technology that is changing the world and and can change the world for the better in so many ways and uh and obviously everything can be used for for scams there's scams in every business so yeah every anything that has money involved there's a scam right you know around it so you know you got to be careful about that stuff but the reality is the technology can be used for the common good 
for the good of people. When, when monetary systems of governments around the world are bleeding people through inflation uh, and crime is increasing because people can't um, get their, their, their family fed at the end of the month with the same money that they were able to do it two months ago, that's a problem. That's a big problem. And crypto is kind of an answer to that. And so I think that we all have a responsibility of bringing people in and, and educating them and helping them along the way. So the answer to your question is, I don't ever want to force somebody to, but if they do want to learn more, there's always going to be that option. And you could see that on just the account setup process of Cornucopius. When you mm -hmm. go to create your account, do you want, do you want to add a Web3 wallet? If you don't want to, you don't have to. You could keep going. Do you want to mm -hmm. add double authentication to protect your account? You don't have to, but we suggest you do. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> these kinds of things. No, I like that. I, I, it makes me think of uh, like technology such as like as simple, and I'm dating myself here as well, but it's like uh, email, right? It came out in the early 90s. Email is such a great technology. I don't know how it works, but and I, it wasn't pushed on me, but guess what? Email has changed the entire way we do business, right? From now on, it's like a must. You you have to be able to know how to use email, right? And that mm -hmm. even even so, it has its own drawbacks too, right? Because now we have the the the, the threat of phishing scams. emails, right? So yeah. like you can get scammed that way as well. So even though there's good in technology, there's also the the bad. And yeah. now we're having we're seeing it all over again. It's all a loop right now, right? So we got crypto crypto coming through, and it's going. It's in that phase right now where people are like, what's 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 crypto? What do you do? What do you? What is it? Currency? Is it, well, technically, it's technology that can be treated as currency, right? But it's it's very it's so it's such an early stage that it's all about education. So, um, for those of us who have been here for quite a long time, uh, we've been anticipating the alpha release as Cornucopius is coming out party. Uh, there have been probably both reasonable and unreasonable expectations for what a marketing push will accomplish. Uh, what does that what does that success look like? Is it like active range? I know we've talked just a, a little bit about it, like in terms of active active players, or is it going viral on in social media? Is it is it the, the copy price going up? You know, like what's the what do you think uh, success looks like? <laughs> the the goal between now and the main the alpha launch um, is to grow the daily active users substantially, uh, and. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because we need to prepare for a large mainstream push, which will ideally like the, the I mean, we need to put some serious funds behind a major push for that alpha release. And that means a lot of eyeballs are going to get on it because we're going to get to we're going to mm -hmm. be going to huge mainstream game KOLs and, and gradually work our way up to the to the main guys that you you don't want them talking negatively about your project so you you want to get an idea of what the sentiment is overall but the goal there would be to build up our daily active users from now until then so that we know that we're providing good performance that there's a good experience that the debugging is happening that um, we're preparing for the masses kind of thing by increasing the masses so what we want to do is grow our daily active users and that's going to help us to improve our processes, mm -hmm. refine our server, um, you know, infrastructure and set up so that we're prepared when the time comes to scale to 50,000 new gamers in a day, 150,000 new gamers in a day, whatever it may be that like, ideally we get that viral component uh, where <clears throat> the product is awesome enough, it's cutting edge enough, it's innovative enough, the lore is strong enough. The graphics are quality. The performance is good. We have all of these key ingredients that is that that mainstream can go. Oh wow, this is freaking awesome, and and then we get that that kind of uh, word of mouth and viral growth that will come with it. Awesome, love that. Um, we we know I, it almost feels like this is a question that we're obligated to ask, and we know you can't share information about it, and so I apologize ahead of time for asking, but. Um, we, when it comes to like the conversations that you're having with exchanges, like it feels like it's like it, it must be like a really complicated process. And there's been a little bit of mention in Discord by Matt about that how uh, Coinbase it looks for utility above all at all other aspects. That's how you get listed on Coinbase. And so we're just wondering, 
understanding that you can't share any details. If you can speak maybe generally about this process of becoming listed, like, is there, is there a bias against um, projects that are starting out on Cardano or is it, or is it some other, other reason that's happening out there? Like what's the struggles you've had with trying to get maybe like a major U S exchange listing? Uh, Coco? Okay. Uh, yeah. That's a great question. Well, the, the way that it works, yes, part of it is utility. Uh, and that is a, a primary metric that Coinbase has is they want to be certain of the utility because that gives that that gives it there's a, a blanket of safety that can come with it to a, to do to a degree for Coinbase because they don't want to go through all the effort and then have issues. The um, the other element is volume, uh, daily volume exchanges before they need to put their team through the work that they want to put them through. They want to know that the volume's enough there for this to make sense, that the project has enough traction, et cetera. And currently, um, you know, for some of the majors that we want to get on, our volume's not where it needs to be. And, but we have gone through the process with all of them and we are, we do know what we need to do. And so as gaming, as a web three, um, ecosystem evolves as the web three gaming, uh, improves and the sentiment starts to improve, uh, as we go into the bull, when volumes start getting up there, then, uh, the new opportunities, uh, exist for getting on, uh, main, you know, some of the main exchanges. And that's obviously a, a goal of ours, uh, without a doubt. And, uh, we'll, you know, we put a lot of focus into that so far. I've talked to tons of them and yes, the process is complicated. Um, mostly just because you're dealing with a group of people in a telegram thread and, um, they may not be all that organized and, you know, you're, you're just, it's a lot of communication. Um, but, uh, we've got a good pipeline of, of options and, uh, you know, we're really, uh, it is a major goal to get on the major, you know, Coinbase, Kraken, Binance, uh, Qcoin. It's, it's a major goal to get on those guys uh, o- over the next year. So ideally, uh, we're successful at that. And I know what we need to do. So. Yeah. In the uh, in Kopi Cafe 106, you dropped like this major, I, I think it was, I don't I don't know if it was on Discord or you mentioned it in Kopi 106 now that I think about it, but there was this major bombshell just recently about like kind of like a buyback um, going from like the 10% to 20%. So like for me, that seems like, you know, this is just going to keep feeding more liquidity into the system and hopefully creating like an environment where like you, we can be successful with those exchanges. So I, for me, when I heard that information, I was super excited about it. I thought it was a really great step and I thought maybe the news was under it was, it was big news and it maybe didn't get the attention that it deserved when that came out. So I, you know, I just wanted to say, re- reiterate that news because I think it's important. That's yeah. Fairly it's very recent important. News. Fairly recent news. So that's fair. Yeah. yeah. It was like a day ago, or two yeah. ago. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, um, and that buyback is, is definitely, that's, that's huge. That's more utility for Kopi. That's keeping the ecosystem circular and, yeah. and, um, and, and that's, that's a really good loop to mm-hmm. have uh, without a doubt. And you, you asked one more element uh, with that question. You asked about Cardano. Is Cardano hurting you in that sense? And I want to acknowledge that. Um, well, number one, we're cross-chain. Always have been. Always planned on it, et cetera. Cardano is our home chain. But no, so so no, Cardano can't hurt us in that regard um, because we, we can easily launch on a centralized exchange with the base version of our token. Uh, or whatever. And there was, there were reasons for, for going with base uh, because Coinbase is a major target. So we, we, we do want to go in that direction, but um, you know, Cardano is um, so while they're not hurting at all in that regard, um, I, I can't say that they're helping the ecosystem as much as I'd like to see that going on. When I look at the foundation, yes, they have a guy at the foundation that's, that is charged with helping people. And he's awesome. I love the guy. Uh, I've been talking to him over the past year and a half. Um, and his job is to help Cardano projects get on some of these exchanges. Um, but in reality, what is, what is mostly needed are those top tier exchanges. Um, and the way that works is Coinbase charges a large amount of money to integrate the primary layer one so that the 
Cardano native tokens can come into play. And Cardano's argument to them, going back to them, has been like, they're Cardano native tokens. That It's not a separate deal. It's incredibly easy. If you already have ADA, it's super easy to add a CNT. So I get Cardano's argument because it's not a big technical hurdle. But Coinbase is, and Binance, they're still going, well, no, we need the money to integrate the L1. And the foundation, to my knowledge, has not uh, crossed that bridge yet. And it's um, it's unfortunate. I think that um, the ecosystem, and I, I'm, look, I'm passionate about Cardano. I'm here. It's it's our home chain, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's our home chain. There's reasons we believe in it and we chose it, but um, but I there's weaknesses in everything. And I think that the foundation's approach has been going for um, large government contracts and banking and and, in that direction. And the ecosystem uh, help has been pretty minimal in terms of getting VCs, in terms of getting uh, help with exchanges, the ecosystem, the the things that we need, uh, bridges to other technologies for interoperability. A lot of that stuff is just really struggling. And and I don't know. So if I talk to Frederick or whoever's running the foundation, I think it's Frederick, but like, you know, they're going to give me a different side of the story and then probably enlighten me on some of the problems that they've had. And I might not have the same uh, objection to their strategy that I currently have. Um, but I feel like a lot of the ecosystem has been somewhat um, not pay great attention to uh, at the expense of these incredibly long sales cycles, bringing a government on. That's a long, 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 long sales cycle. Perhaps multiple terms have already changed over before you close the deal, which also increases the risk, uh, you know, because of term term length. But um, anyway, sorry, long, long answer on that. I hope for more help from the foundation. I really do. And we are, by by the way, I'm not just complaining here. Mm -hmm. We're going to participate. Cardano Mm -hmm. now has governance and they now have the DREP system. And we are working on a group that is aligned in interest uh, to protect and vote accordingly on the, uh, you know, on the algorithm and and the chain's development. Um, so we're going to, we have a D rep that's going to be representing us and we're building out that group now and a values. And, and it's all about how do we help Cardano ecosystem yeah, builders, the be people good that citizens. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. So I'm glad I may have that. given you too much there. I, we, I, we I, lo- I mean, I, I love it because it gives us insight into, into that. That's something that I would never have learned <laughs> other than talking to you. It's, yeah, it's yeah. very interesting to get that side of that, that perspective as well. I mean, I'm glad that you also have that those connections, those early on connections as well during with the Cardano Foundation. And it even makes the start to question as to like, like, would we would you want to like even do like a catalyst funding proposal for stuff like this? Is, is that is, is that even part of is that in the is that in the cards? You know, we've talked about it um, and we haven't landed on what would make sense to do a catalyst funding proposal. Um, or yet, um, is, is it possible? Yes, it's very possible, um, but it, it needs to make sense um, because there's a good amount of time and energy that goes into it. And, uh, you know, you, yes, you, you get ADA out of that or whatever in chunks and milestones as you accomplish the goals that you set out to accomplish. But, um, you know, it's, it's an option and we've definitely considered it. And obviously Catalyst is a powerful tool for the ecosystem as a whole. And I'm a big supporter of that. Uh, endeavor. Um, and I, I hope that it really works. I hope that this governance and the DREP system and everything that Cardano is doing is going to work, but it's going to have its issues. It's early stage and that's what it is. And that's the, that's the thing is the tech is robust and solid. It's some of the best tech in the world in terms of blockchain peer reviewed. It, it is built to last foundationally. Right. Um, but the ecosystem is in early, early stages and there's a lot of weaknesses. Um, and and so that's you know there's pros and cons yeah like well i mean i mean my the only reason i say that is just because like i know a lot of the stuff that gets funded there it's all it's based on the community feedback it's always been about what have they it's all about deliverables right and and personally i feel you've delivered a, such a massive game like you've delivered you've grown the community you've got you've sh- you're showing utility on your token i mean you have been delivering to the community 
regardless of it being just Cardano, but you're talking about multi-chain and talking about crypto in general. So like, I feel there's a strong like presence there from Cornucopius into, you know, uh, and, and it's evident. I mean, again, you have that backing, I think. And I feel like that would be something that, that obviously it's the community would have to vote, but I feel like you have that, um, yeah, portfolio, I guess, if you will, uh, the fact that you've been able to, to produce something with, you know, yeah, there's, there's traction and trust and, uh, right, we've exactly. um, yeah. So a lot of that is, is definitely helpful. And I do think that we could, we could go yeah. in that direction. Not and, that you need you know, it, but I mean, it's just the, just the fact that I feel like I feel strongly the fact that if there were anything to be voted through in terms of the catalyst funding, it would be your project. Yeah. I'm, I feel strongly well, that's, I that's strongly it. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and we're still open to it. We've talked about it a few yep. times, but, um, you know, to me, it's about, so blockchain and the power of community and incentive and everything around the ethos of what is blockchain and crypto in this industry. Uh, so much of it is about community and how do we participate? How do we add value? You know, we've thought about that all along. So mm. one way to participate, add value and receive value is catalyst, uh, but another way is just to make connections. So we've connected multiple groups where we have a need for this particular thing to have an integration to Cardano. So we connect them with the foundation and we hope that something comes of it. In some mm -hmm. cases, things have, some cases they haven't. Chainport was one success mm -hmm. uh, where we got um, Chainport to add Cardano to their uh bridge their you know and and that that was a huge success increasing interoperability and uh, which we then resulted in us connecting them to the foundation and iohk so that they could uh continue uh doing uh adding value and adding other cardano native tokens as, as well so you know some some areas we try to contribute uh to the ecosystem and uh, are successful and sometimes we're not yeah it's all about the bigger picture and it's, and, uh, and I'm glad you mentioned, you know, the community and it's cause like you did an interview with, uh, block fuel, uh, and you talked about the community as one of your biggest assets and what do you, what can we do to ensure that it's an inviting uh, place for new people? What can you guys do? Yeah. yeah us, do not, not just us, but the community at large, what, what can, what can right. we all do? You know, mm -hmm. you know, as I think you're doing a great job of it. Uh, uh, but it's when somebody new comes in to be helpful. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, ideally my, it's my hope that when the masses of mainstream gamers come in, that we've got, um, 50,000 active gamers in our discord that are ready to, to give game tours so that mm -hmm. people can really find their way around the yeah. game well and get in, immersed in our community. So game tours is, is something <laughs> that I'd like to see happening because we want to have that social element. We also want it to be where somebody can sign into our website, get online, play the game without, you know, getting a game tour. Yes. Mm -hmm. We want it to be that easy eventually, like, but that's a goal. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, but really what can you guys do is uh, that's, that's a big element, uh, mm -hmm. show people around, teach them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's one reason we've been so diligent about cultivating relationship with you guys, our community, because, this is important. It's a we thing. We're all doing this together. And that's another thing that we haven't talked about is governance. But gradually over time, we want the community voice to have more and more weight yeah. in what we do more and more over time. Yeah. And that that is a goal um, as well. I can't wait for that community governance. I'm curious how that process will look like. I mean, I know there's got to be some sort of uh, checks and balances there as well in terms of making sure that you keep the core fundamentals intact, right? Because you don't want to just uh, completely tarnish the game with something that completely completely yeah, alters baby steps. exactly exactly i mean again it's it's those those levers that we talked about with rob in terms of what you're pulling in terms of, and also there will be mistakes done and maybe you have to kind of backtrack at certain times but and the less mm -hmm. the least amount of times that you do that the better right so it's it's not going to be perfect but I, i'm really interested in the governance portion as to what's to yeah. come in terms of how we build around our the towns and and then what what comes next and the themes of the future and the themes of the future theme zones right like how all that works and how all that looks. Um, it's going to be very interesting how this whole thing evolves. Um, so I'm really happy that we're in, yeah, in this space. Stuff that Rob and I have been planning that um, brings governance into <laughs> uh, the game in some ways that are freaking super, super cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, 
I wish I could. No, I wish I could give by all you means, feel free to there. leak. Uh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish I could. Um, we're close. We're, yeah. we're not far from. from it feels uh, like it. it feels like we're on the verge of something big coming. You know, yeah. just all of it together. And I, and I like to uh, say, I mean, even I, I'd be willing to definitely give people tours out there. So I mean, I just oh, did yeah. a, a recent tour just recently for our internal round tables stuff, uh, yeah. at the Knights Guild. So like, I mean, oh, I, nice. it actually yeah. worked out really well. I actually did some practicing here and there. So I've actually been giving tours out uh, to certain members of the guild recently. So I'll get you a little hat it, and make you a tour guide. Uh, yeah, exactly. I might, I might, I might do it. You never know. Yeah. Give me a little hat tour guide and a little, a little map that I just pull out for no, for no reason. Um, <laughs> one thing that Eddie and I have been pretty like obsessed about, uh, we did a, we did a whole three part series on just the live service game landscape and like web two. And we did it. We really wanted to understand what cornucopius is getting into. Um, and we, we learned a lot from that and I'm not sure we talked about power World a little bit has like, you know, have a very small team and they didn't have much of a media push, but in, in re some research that I was doing, I came across the study done that said that, you know, power world success that they attributed it to two main reasons. One power world leaned into its borrowing of existing IP. Now they're getting into a little bit of trouble with that. They're getting sued by Nintendo, but <laughs> they, they really leaned into on it and people. And so, it, but it helped people feel more comfortable spending money to buy the game. And the other reason they, they said that they're successful successes it was like power world had a really simple message it's pokemon with guns so it's really easy so it got me thinking about what cornucopius cornucopius is like this huge game with a lot of game loops and i would say as far as the game goes it's going to be pretty complex how do you distill that down into like a really concise message that will actually resonate with gamers because if it's a long message i'm, I'm i think that you know people will just not understand it so what like how do we do that you know or how do you do that in in terms of marketing yeah, uh, that's a tough one. That's a, that's a definitely a tough one. Well, number one, it's going to be that survey that uh, you know I was talking about earlier with with Jen to, to really gather market data from a large group of gamers uh, around what we're doing. A custom tailored survey geared towards what we're doing to help us craft our messaging in a most compelling way. So uh, that we're going to be starting as soon as possible. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's a tough question. And, and, you know, there's been a lot of, of failed, um, failed launches with, with games. And so we have studied some of what's going on, um, and what's happened with other projects. And there's a lot that you have to consider, uh, with that cyberpunk 2077, um, they, you know, that was a, a hugely anticipated launch that, uh, like there was massive attention around what they were doing, but they didn't deliver. And so you see, you see flops that, that occur and yeah, you learn from some of these things for sure. Uh, what did they do incredibly well? Well, clearly their marketing was amazing prior to that because they, they generated some massive, massive traction and interest, but you know, um, so the, you, you just try to keep your ear to the ground and, and look at what's working and what isn't working. Uh, you mentioned Pal World several times. I mean, they took a very working concept Pokemon and and turned it into something. Uh, they added elements to that. So they had their own spin. So they were innovative, yet at the same time looking at something that worked. And I think that um, I like that. I like that approach. Uh, I mean, they've definitely been accused of stealing, uh, you know, or uh, just lacking innovation by, by doing what Pokemon is doing or whatever, I, I believe. But like... The reality is you have an idea. Has it been done before? Probably. You think it's your idea. It was your idea in your head. It was the first time you've heard of it. Uh, but has it been done before? Yeah, probably has, you know. And so um, we try to innovate, but we always we also try to look at what works, what worked for Star Citizen, you know, what's working for them um, and, and what works for Pal World and what's not working for Pal World. And um, and you learn and adopt and innovate. And, um, you know, our advisor told us, Hey, uh, Philip, it was Philip that said this. He said, you should probably keep it to 25% innovation. Don't go a hundred percent innovation because then you're in high, high risk land. You have no idea what's going to work and what's not uh, with all of that. Um, go 25% risk and then scale it up over time as you have more data and you can increase the innovation with more data, et cetera. But there are so many elements that you have to execute on. And I think I mentioned them earlier, you know, you want the game to be performant. You want quality graphics that you need them to have custom graphics. There needs to be a strong community element, progression, gameplay mechanics, leaderboards, loops, 
all of these things uh, have to be there. And, uh, you know, so that's, um, it's a big thing to be able to say that we're going to be mainstream marketable uh, by that time. And it's very possible that that gets pushed a little bit. Like, uh, I, I sure hope that we can keep our timeline. We've gotten better and better about estimating how long it's going to take us to do certain things. Um, <clears throat> but man, there's a lot of complexity as well. And that's why you see a lot of these projects that don't do as well as they, uh, as, as they intended to do. Um, but man, I think we have shown that we can produce quality uh, in, in terms of having a performant game and, and quality custom graphics and assets. And, um, and so now it's about getting the lore involved and the, and the primary game loops uh, involved and, and we're going to have something we're, we should have something very compelling to, that, that a lot of people want. And I think the other part of what you were talking about there, you know, for us, it's okay. Let's lean on our advisors. We have monthly calls with our advisors and we talk about, um, Hey, are, are we going in the right direction here? And, uh, we get their feedback and it's been invaluable yeah. because they, they have a greater amount of perspective uh, in their particular areas than we have. And that's why we've brought them on because they're better at what they're doing than, mm -hmm. than what we would do on our own. And so, uh, we can go to them and, and, uh, and actually Philip's going to be coming on uh, Kopi cafe next week, I believe. Oh, awesome. Ooh, nice. That's nice great. I love, I love when you bring out uh, people yeah. like that. Just, uh, I think the last person yeah. that you had was Eric, and I love that energy that he brought. That was into a great, the, great interview. That, Eric. Yeah, I love their, uh, Eric's attitude and 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 his yeah. his. Clearly, he's been in the space a lot, and he knows what to look for, and and he's spot on in terms of what you guys are delivering. Is is is? And he's an awesome guy. I had no idea who was in Austin until uh, consensus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was actually oh, nice. during consensus that Tobias uh, introduced us to Eric, yeah. um, which is which is really cool because. At, at the time, like Star Citizen is a, a freaking quality game. Yeah. So in fact, we're very similar mm -hmm. uh, to Star Citizen in a lot, a lot of ways. Um, and so to be able to have Eric involved and he lives in Austin, I mean, I can go meet up with him. Yeah. And we, we, we actually awesome. have been planning that as well. So. Oh, awesome. Um, so I wanted to, I'm not sure if you've, how often you watch our show, but we did do it like, a, again, a deep, uh, going back to what, Bo was saying we did as much as dive. I can, but it's yeah, like, well, we, we understand. <laughs> no, for sure. Uh, in our in our deep dive, we we go into like live service games, and there was it seemed to be like a reoccurring theme that we found that you know that was how turnover at a game studio had has had like hindered development. And I mm -hmm. in, in a forever game, like ten years from now, the people that who, who built Cornucopius uh, from scratch may not be there. You know. Uh, to continue to grow the game, how can you ensure that the vision can maintain, you know, stays consistent? Uh, so it's essential to build in the processes um, it, from the get go. So, you know, if you're going to bring people into a culture, you need to have a good training program mm -hmm. about what your culture is and what you're doing. Right. Um, and then what is your vision and what is it, what are your company values and, and what am I becoming a part of here? So you build a culture that then helps to transition during those phases where, okay, yeah, we just lost 15 people. Um, no problem. Like mm -hmm. we, we, we need to ramp up the hiring cycle, but we've already got a culture and training sy and systems and processes and workflows in place to bring the new person into. And so it shouldn't be an issue. In fact, the new person's probably coming into a backlog that's been put into JIRA that uh, the other person that just left hadn't finished. So they should oh. already have a, a, you know, a selected list of tasks that awesome. uh, they're going to be, you know, working on. So that's awesome. just standard business um, stuff. Yeah. Coming, really. coming from a non-developer too. I mean, the, the question also just kind of stems off of the fact that like, that's what we're seeing in the in in um, in the community is like and in in those examples though it's all about the layoffs right because they've they've sped hired and back in the you know the during the COVID times and but at the same time like I'm thinking more also in terms of like you know like if David were to get get promoted or he wants to start his own project right like you want to be able to secure, make sure that that his baby is taken care of right as when he once he takes on and decides to take on a different project himself yeah. or the jillians or the or the natalia's of the world right they i want them to progress because 
you know, it's, it's great to see that growth. Uh, and I just want to make sure that in a forever game, like as we're, as what we're talking about here, I, I want to be, make sure that that cornucopius is here to stay for sure. And, and I want to kind of convey that to the audience here. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, David is so incredibly passionate just to, to comment on one of the names you threw out there. Yeah. He, he's going to be here uh, forever. <laughs> yeah. He, he's it's awesome. He yeah. loves what he does. And that That's was great. why I spent the two months reaching out to him, uh, to finally get a meeting. I don't know if I finished that story earlier, but I find he finally, you know, said, yeah, I'll give you 10 minutes or whatever. And uh, we had a meeting and it was 45 minutes and, uh, you know, we made him an offer like a week later and he was ready to get going. And then it was, you know, his, he can't, you can't restrain him. Awesome. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Cause he seems so low key, but that's amazing I, I little try to restrain yeah. him. I'm not kidding. I awesome. literally tried. Okay, dude. <laughs> wearing yourself out yeah. like get get some rest this yeah. weekend Just take a go break spend some time with yeah. your wife you know yeah. like but um I love but that. yeah that kind of passion is is contagious so your your team builds a culture around loving to work yeah. and loving well, I, work. well i thank you josh for being persistent yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems like it's paid off so that's like part of the your relationship building skills there <laughs> well you know what we've had a lot of amazing hires at the company uh, and a lot has come from the community that a few Rob's found that like, mm -hmm. it's just, you, you find people that are passionate and it, it, it's not going to fail. Nice mug. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what you drinking, Eddie? Oh yeah. Just, yeah. just some water right now. Oh, okay. All right. Good, good. Got the OG here. OG thermos. We wanted to do something kind of fun because, um, back when David, and Josh had their interview late game crypto. Josh, uh, Josh uh, posted a tweet looking for questions from the community, and you gave him a question to ask David. And we uh, we borrowed that question and we asked Rob, and oh, cool. both Rob and David kind of answered the question the same way. And so we, we have a feeling you're probably going to answer the same way. So we're going to throw one little caveat, but uh, you know, the question is is um, uh, what what is something other than Cornucopius's team that is a great strength few people know about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they, they both answer team. So we assume that you would probably have a similar answer. So other than the team, we understand that's a big strength that maybe people aren't as aware of. What what what's another one that you see? You know, I think mine's a little bit different than uh Rob and, and David's take, maybe, and I I'd need to re-listen to what their um answers were, but uh for me, like one of the biggest challenges in a multiplayer game is you've got this huge amount of data that needs to flow from me to you and you back to me and vehicles that are going a thousand 1200 miles an hour that kind of thing it needs to be incredibly fast and performant right and the higher the level of quality the more cost uh to performance the higher the level of quality of your graphics the more cost to performance the harder it is to be performant uh, the better the quality of the graphics gets. And we're, we're almost at a realistic level. Like if you look at our water and the trees and like, it is really high quality graphics. And we've accomplished the, uh, the seemingly impossible through technology and through a passionate team where it's performant at high frames per, per second and increasing in that performance. So with this quality and the ability for many people to get in and have a positive experience performance wise, you don't see a lot of that in Unreal Engine 5 uh, games right now. Like there's there's a lot of struggle with that because Unreal Engine 5 is the newest tech and it's incredibly powerful. But like we have a significant advantage there with having graphics of this quality and multiplayer game uh, where we're still getting that kind of performance. So that's a huge strength. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think enough people really know about the challenges of that. And we, we're going to have challenges. We've still got some buggy stuff that needs mm -hmm. to be resolved. We always will. There's going to be more bugs the next go around. The next build's going to have more bugs than the last build it had. That's the way it works because we're getting bigger and better and faster. Um, and that means more debugging and more quality assurance work. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just more more of us testing and and logging in those uh, issues on yep. the on the on the launcher. So that's what matters is is really us testing the game out and 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 submitting yeah. those for you guys as well. Yep, Josh, uh, that's that's the, all the questions we have for you. Thanks. For, I mean that that was an amazing time that we had. I really appreciate <laughs> you giving us that that time and 
I mean, yeah, absolutely. If there's anything that you wanted to uh, close on or or save to, as we uh, yeah. kind of exit here? The, the mic is yours. If the you mic is yours, it. sir. Oh, well, I want to ask you guys a question. Oh, there you oh, go. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, and I'd like to hear from both of you on it, if if you don't mind. But Not at what, all. what was it about cornucopias that inspired you to get involved? And, and then what was it that inspired you to create uh, by doing this show? And so, yeah, th- those two questions, really. Yeah. I'll let you go, go ahead. ahead. All right. I'll, so, I mean, I, for me, it started just me and Eddie racing together and we were having these conversations, you know, the, the two minutes or so before the race, there's a lot of time to talk. And so we would talk, we would race, we would talk, we would race. And we were like, why isn't anyone, this, this is a fun conversation. We're speculating. We're, we're making up things about the game that, you know, they, you guys can't give us that information. You give us the snippets. So we take that and we're like, well, what about this? And what about that? And it was a really fun, exciting conversations. And we're like, we should record this. And we're like, well, no one, and it was at a time when people were doing like a lot of lives and, and the, the game was really choppy because, you know, not not the game, but the the recording of the game was choppy in the mm-hmm. lives. And we were like, well, wouldn't it be awesome if we did a, a produced show, cut down these lives to like a manageable amount of time so people weren't, you know, getting bored. And then mm-hmm. we were like and then and then we showed the game without the, the, the recording issues. If you could figure that out, we'd have something. Mm-hmm. So I think that's just that once we started thinking about it, it got us more and more excited about doing it. And then six episodes in, we were like probably sure we were never going to be able to re- <laughs> like, I mean, the, the, if you, our episode one, the, the game, the game footage is like a minute frozen, a minute frozen. And we were like, well, that's not how to do that. We can't record yeah. it like that. Yeah. And so we, we had to try a bunch of different things to record in 4k. And once we got it down, I think you feel the same way, Eddie. We we're like, Oh, this is this. Now this is going to work. Yeah, Y'all could epi- emailed us. We would have told you what. what yeah, was, what yeah was we had fun. a lot of trial and errors. We had an episode zero uh, yeah. that, that <laughs> basically was just very just the frame rate was just god awful. Yeah. yeah, and then we're basically limited based on our the technology that we have today is is yeah. how I see it because uh, not many. Cause, I'm cause glad you guys figured it out though. You did great. Yeah, well, we we're trying to we, we that's why we stick away from uh, stay away from the live uh, part. Uh, we di- we do definitely prefer the recording uh, mm-hmm. podcast. We will be trying to do some lives at some point, maybe just one of us uh, doing the game. Uh, but yeah, that might, that's something in the future we might be. Uh, potentially doing what? What got you excited? I'm, I'm curious of your answer too. What What made uh, you want to do all this? Well, I mean, I'm a I've been a gamer all my life. I mean, since the Nintendo, and I just you know, and obviously the evolution of gaming has kind of changed into just being a money maker for for corporations, and it's just kind of I was looking for a different thing, and then I, I fell into crypto. I wish I fell into it sooner. Obviously, back in 2009, right? But I I was kind of like, what was what is this, right? Like this is this is crazy. Uh, and then I find card, card, fell into Cardano just because I, as I was trying to educate myself on technology, and I mean, I, I, I'm, and I just kind of fell in love with the with ADA uh, in terms of how it how it was laid out, uh, future promises. This is even before staking, right? This is before you're. I'm trying to find a crypto game, yeah. a crypto NFT that uh, that was tied to gaming, and I found like I think it was like Crypto Dino or something like that, uh, and I was fell in. I found I finally found. Pernicopus. I fell into the, that, that the GTI was about to come to mint. And I was like, this is fantastic. I've got assets that, I'm, that are tied to you that I, that are actually, I own and I'm playing with my vehicle. This is, this is yeah. amazing. This is exactly what I want. I've hated the times where I would spend like, maybe uh, like I would buy those shark cards on, on Grand Theft Auto. And then now GTA, I mean, granted GTA five has been out for what, over a decade, like going on 10, 12 years. And now that the new game is going to be coming out in the next year or two, all that stuff that I have is gone. It's just, it's gone. It's just like, I have to start from scratch all over again. Right. Yeah. So it's like first versus like, why couldn't I, you know, have like a particular asset that I maybe got a, got an asset in a, such as a game as like in Skyrim. Like I got this early on weapon, but why can't I take that sword and sell it off to someone? Like, why can't yeah. I just, it just sits there. Right? I just, again, it's, it's not really about the money. It's just about how, how the whole thing the principle works in general. Of it. Right, yeah. the principle of the whole thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. But you also um, make it so easy for us because of your transparency, like from the project, because like there's a transparency issue in, in blockchain in general. So like I, I'm not speaking about any other projects, but like, you know, the, the level of transparency, it, it's it's it makes you feel really confident 
that even if I, we disagree with something you say or something you do, there's I never I never once would ever say to myself, well, well, they're 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 we're plotting against me. They're, 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 your decisions are always what you think is best for the growth of the game, the growth of the mm-hmm. community. And so for me, for me doing this, doing this podcast, it's it's very easy for me to want to give my resources to that because I trust, I trust the messaging from you guys, even if there's mm-hmm. if like, I'm like, Oh, I'm not sure that's the right decision. You know, but I also recognize that I don't know what's the conversations you're having. I, I so I'm, I'm like, Oh, it's five hours a week, six hours a week, whatever it is to, to do a podcast and edit it. That's, that's like, it makes me happy to do that because of the relationship we have with the, with the team. That's, yeah. That's and, freaking awesome. I mean, that's and, awesome. To hear and I just, yeah, go yeah. for it. No. And, and it's just to further add, it's just, again, I, Back then, clearly, there was not there was nothing, right? There was no game out that was out. And of course, once the final, once we actually were able to go into an actual game and fall into it, that's when we were like, you know, we were planning right before, like we got to do something while the game's coming out. Like we got, we were able to walk yeah. in this place. And we, we, you know, we, with Kalito Valley. I mean, you kidding me? Like this is fantastic. We should start something. That's what kind of the visuals are so good. It makes compelling yeah. TV, anyways, right? It, so. Yeah. Had had it been like not the way that the graphics, and I'm glad that you guys waited for e, UE five, right? I'm just glad that it the graphics are just that good, and the concept is there with crypto. Mm-hmm. I think this game's going to change the industry. I think it's gonna it's gonna pave the way for other games as well, not just this yeah. one. Um, and I, I want to be part of its success. And if I can create a podcast with with Fohibers here. As we were talking, we were be, we had the same mentality. It just drove me into finally saying yes. I, I, it's also and it's also helping me in my private life as well in terms of presentation skills. I do presentations at work as well, and I try to. Uh, I'm very cognizant of the way I the speak and look now because I have to present uh, on camera to, 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 yeah, to owners and to owner, yeah. to owners yeah. and investors and, and where I where I work privately. And it's just it's I'm also using that as a as a tool as well for myself. Yeah. It, it just kind of made sense. I mean, then the next thing you know, Fo Hubris is like, "Hey, we should do a podcast, man." I'm I'm glad that it's so it's so good to hear. Like that, you know, some of the things that you guys said there were, um, yeah, that that helps me feedback wise. Like, what is working, what isn't, and um, it's great to hear that the transparent communication has impacted your ability to trust what we're doing. Uh, You know, that was the reason for that from the get go. So. Mm I definitely feel like that that's been a good decision, you know, that to, to have that as one of our core values, the transparency aspect. Josh, thanks. Thanks again for answering all our questions. And and I, I'm sorry we kept you so long. I hope it was all right. But I, mean, that was my, yeah. I felt like I kept you guys long. No, 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 no. Like, I'm so I'm so over out. the moon with the interview. It was it's been great. And thank you yeah. for for the time. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. And you guys 100%. did such a great job preparing. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah. And thank you for what you guys are doing. I love seeing the community participating in various ways. It's, yeah. It's yeah. Fun. yeah. Look and forward hopefully. now that we have this relationship doing it again in the future. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut yeah. you off, Eddie. No, no, yeah. No, you you kind of hit it in the nail. Hopefully we can see you in the next like, six months or if not a year to see how things are progressing. So that'd be great. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm glad to do another one. Eddie, we did it. We had our interview with Josh. What stood out to you about talking to him? Uh, I like, I mean, oh man, a lot of things. I mean, the fact that he opened up about his life story and all that, I, it was yeah, really touching yeah, to yeah, me yeah. and the, how that transitioned over to like his mission with Haiti as well with the well, uh, with the well that was produced. Uh, I, I, it's just awesome. I'm just glad that he's at the helm of, of this project, to be honest, along with Rob. I, I think they're, they really do complement each other. Um, in a in a good way it's a it's it's great to see Mm -hmm. yeah that part of the interview is what stands out to me because i think josh is he's always so on message he's Mm -hmm. always you know you know rightfully so he's he's writing he's he's steering the ship in a lot of ways but to to get like kind of crack the nut open a little bit and peer inside Mm -hmm. i I felt really honored to have those kind of conversations with him i felt really grateful that that he opened up to us about those things and i i to see i suspected this human side of him you mm-hmm. know in, in the yeah. interviews that we've watched you know you get little glimpses of it but mm-hmm. to, to see it on full display like that i felt really honored to be there and to be able to talk to him and and to know that he's really you know one of the people steering this project yeah i really like how they complement each other really like really well and he, you can see that that i feel like josh is very I, when I sense Josh, he's very like the corporate side of things, and and then Rob is the like more of the gamer side, right? And I love that. I think that's actually exactly what we need. I don't I don't think it's a singular CEO is is necessary here. 
And yeah. I think that's it, it's it makes perfect sense, uh, honestly. Yeah. And I can't wait to see where things are going to go. Eddie and I thank the Knights Guild for letting us be a part of their amazing community. Make sure you follow them and us on X. Use the links in the description to join their Discord and find their website. Thank you to Rob, David, and especially our guest Josh after spending so much time with us. I mean, it was amazing. We we were forever grateful. Thank you to all the people working hard behind the scenes to get the game ready. Uh, Finally, please subscribe to Around the Corn's YouTube channel so you don't miss next week's episode. Until then, Eddie and I will see you around the corn. Josh, I want to ask yeah. you like one bonus question if I can, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, like a long time poker player. Uh, I've oh, studied yeah. the game and I saw you did really well in the poker tournament at, um, yeah. at, uh, at, uh, Rare Evo. Awesome. And I'm just, and I'm just wondering what's your, are you Thanks. a tight, tight aggressive? Are you loose aggressive? Are you, <laughs> do, are you using like game theory, optimal poker? Or are you more of like a feel kind of reading a guy? Like what's your, what's your style of poker? Oh, wow. You, you know your stuff. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Oh, um, I, I played like 20 million hands of poker in my life. Like legitimately. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was we're, we're for rooting for you, man. Well, yeah. we'll, sure. to play. well, thanks for rooting for me. Yeah. Um, the, uh, that was a fun tournament. I, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a little of the story of the tournament too, but, um, <clears throat> To answer the question, default to tight aggressive, mm-hmm. um, because loose aggressive is like uh, degen times ten yeah. kind of player. So you're going to have massive volatility. Right, it's uh, hard to maintain that. How yeah. the cards are flowing, but it's not always tight aggressive because if you sit down and you read a table uh, and and it's the table's playing in a certain way, well then it might be a benefit to you to loosen up and play three five off suit yeah. and. Uh, and if you happen to catch something and you can or you can pull off a bluff, then uh, you can really take advantage of stuff like that. Or if you get caught bluffing with a yeah. three five and they now see, oh, oh, he's a yeah. really loose player, man. Uh, then they have zero confidence in you next time. You're going to get a call out of them mm-hmm. and you're going to get their chips uh, mm-hmm. kind of thing because they're going to be like, oh, this guy doesn't have any crap. Well, then you turn over an ace, a, ace queen uh, suited spades. Uh, for the nut flush and they're like what yeah okay. you know yeah. so um so <laughs> it's it's also about reading people reading like and and what do they have any tells what what's what what is their uh style of play and what is this tell that uh indicates when they have an incredible hand uh it's about um strategy in, in a tournament it's definitely different significantly different than playing in a live game where you can check in check out at any time you yeah. want tournament you get you know a lot of uh, so for this particular tournament it was um first of all i felt awful but like i got invited to that tournament three months prior to even <laughs> committing to rare evo they're like hey we really want you to come play in this tournament or whatever the the rare evo, evo guys and i was like sure i'll probably play i never committed until the last second but like the way the conference was going, the team had everything under control. I felt bad going, leaving yeah. the team for the booth uh, breakdown and stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, they asked me about it well in advance. And I was like, all right, I might as well go play. Um, and I sat down and I did not catch crap for mm. like three Well, that's hours. how the tournaments go. I mean, you got to be patient. Bleeding, yeah. bleeding, bleeding. <laughs> and I wasn't at a table where I felt like I could loosen up uh, with my hand selection very much i did a couple of times out of impatience and lost <laughs> yeah that, that'll happen paid yeah. the price for that but um i like i was doing horrible until uh the very last second when i had to just go ahead and go all in on a few hands with decent cards yeah. at least um and uh tripled up my stack um and then all of a sudden i found myself at the final table that's crazy it's i yeah. imagined it was like a a, a one-day tournament so the the blind structure probably got pretty high pretty fast where you reach that like all in phase you know yeah the blinds are going up pretty fast and uh, it's making it uh more and more challenging uh as you go so yeah tournament strategy is so different Mm -hmm. but um but it was awesome yeah i think i played really well actually you know and looking back there were a few decisions at the final table that i didn't uh that i would have questioned uh in a normal scenario but then when i look back at it i'm like no, I made the right call. Just didn't turn out in my favor. Yeah, that's that's the hardest thing about poker. I find is that 
is is le- learning with the reality that you made the right decision but got the wrong result. Yeah, and, and yeah. that's hard. Hard to that's hard in life to even you know. So yeah. for, poker makes you learn it, or you or it eats you up. Yeah. yeah. But at least we we got some cornucopious time right there with that hat on at the same time. Yeah, that, that, I, that, that, I was that, made that. sure that I, this hat was going to be worn <laughs> was on TV. I was yeah, like, it's awesome. a marketing opportunity. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>